Today we're back in the 2022 Honda Civic Si. And we've already filmed quite a few videos on this car. We've done a POV night drive where we kind of give you guys some final thoughts. We had the launch where we gave some first impressions on what this is like to drive in the canyons. A lot of spirited driving in that video and in the night drive. In today's video, I wanted to calm things down a little bit and just give you guys an idea of what this new Civic Si is like to daily drive. What's it like for the 90% of the time that you spend in this car? We're gonna go drive through the city. We're gonna shift at 2000 RPM. We're just gonna kind of relax in this thing and explore what it's like to live with on a daily basis. There are some nuances here that I wanted to discuss, some questions that I wanted to answer, and uh, just kind of give you guys some final thoughts on what it's been like to live with this new Civic Si. So first, let's walk you around this thing. We'll do a quick refresh on the exterior and interior, and then we'll just take it on the road. We have another Civic Si in blazing orange. Not my favorite color, honestly. I don't think it matches well with the red seats on the inside, but it is sharp and it does accentuate the lines of the car nicely. We have 18 inch black alloy wheels. These are the all season tires, 235 section, decent amount of sidewall. I probably would want to throw 17s on here if it were my choice with uh, the potholes and the winter driving here in Michigan, save a little bit of weight too at the rim. But as a stock wheel, this actually looks pretty good. I do like the styling of this new SI. It's pretty uh, attractive from all angles. It's definitely on the more conservative side. We have the same grill here from the Civic hatch. Super fuel efficient, rated for 27 miles to the gallon in the city, 37 on the highway. 200 horsepower, 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, and of course, a six-speed manual transmission. We have a surprising amount of trunk space back here too. For a vehicle this size in this class, this is really nice. We have a super wide opening, a lot of space side to side, and you have a 60-40 folding rear seat configuration. And you can fold those rear seats down from the trunk, which is super useful. Little spoiler here too. So I'm five foot 10, this driver's seat is set to my driving position. I can fold down the seat without it hitting the back rest, which is nice, and it's a pretty flat loading surface. There's a little bit of a lip here on the trunk, and uh, this height isn't that much to put larger items in, but for a sedan, it's pretty usable space back here, and uh, the back seat is super roomy. I have a ton of leg room. This door close sounds too. It feels quality. It feels nice. Small armrest. It's pretty Spartan back here, to be honest. If you're looking for a more luxurious interior space, the Civic hatch or sedan touring is going to be a better option, but then you're not going to get the performance and fun to drive feel of this SI. I think this SI kind of makes a nice balance between an enthusiast car with features that enthusiasts would want, like the Bose sound system and all the Honda sensing driving assistance features that work super well. They've saved some money with this new SI. We haven't gotten a couple features like the adaptive suspension and heated seats. Personally, I don't really like heated seats in a, in a cloth seated car. I think it's a little bit redundant. The seats don't get as cold as they do in leather or vinyl. Personally, I would prefer a heated steering wheel over heated seats in this SI. So that's just me. The adaptive suspension, I think, <laughs> didn't really make that much of a difference. And it just adds cost and complexity when you need to replace it down the line. So I'm gonna kind of say I'd actually prefer a uh, standard suspension without adaptive dampers in this new SI. It rides well enough. We'll talk about, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get on the road. All right, so just a quick walk around. We've walked around this car plenty of times before. You've seen it inside and out. Let's focus on this front seat area. So, starting up the car, we have app wireless Apple CarPlay enabled here, and it seems to start up and connect very quickly. Once you get past the little uh, legal disclaimer screen, uh, everything starts up pretty fast. Even in the morning on cold starts, the screen seems to respond pretty well. Um, you've got a bunch of different settings here that you can go into. Unfortunately, you can only access your vehicle settings when you're stopped with the, hand, with the parking brake on. 
And that's where you go in and control your rev matching. Uh, you go into driving assistance. At the very bottom is the rev match system. For how well laid out the rest of this interior is, it's a little bit of an oversight in my opinion on Honda's part, not including like a button for rev matching or something just quick, quickly that you can access in the menus. Um, it would be nice to be able to turn this on or, and off at kind of a moment's notice. Uh, sometimes I'm in the mood to match rev match my own gears. Sometimes I'm not. I'd like to be able to change that as quickly as possible. So really kind of my one of my only complaints about the interior of this car um, and the drivability on a day-to-day -day basis. We're just going to leave that on for this video. We've got a few different drive modes, sport, individual, and normal. Sport stiffens up the steering, improves the throttle response, gives you, gives you a little bit more of an artificial engine note. I don't mind it. I think it sounds pretty good, and I'm very picky when it comes to artificial engine sounds. In the higher registers, higher revs, it gets a little bit fake sounding, but definitely not as bad as the previous gen SI, which in my opinion sounded terrible. Uh, individual mode is a nice in-between where you can kind of configure the steering weight between normal and sport. I have my engine set to sport and individual and steering set to normal. Uh, also just driving around in normal mode is just fine too. I have really nice user-friendly ergonomics in this cabin. I love these climate control switches. The click that they make is just so satisfying with everything going to touch displays and haptic feedback. It's just nice to have a satisfying climate control button. Uh, I find that really nice and useful. Of course, Apple CarPlay is having some trouble connecting right now, so we're <laughs> going to go with a wired connection. To be honest, I have found the wireless connection in this car to be a little bit buggy this week with CarPlay, and the wired connection is kind of the way to go. We're actually going to restart the car here. This hasn't happened before. All right. Um, so anyway, like I was saying, <laughs> love the climate control. Uh, it's super easy to control your temperature. You don't have dual zone climate control, but that's okay. Uh, you, have, you can easily change the direction that the air is coming from, whether it's your, your feet, your face, the windshield. And these vents are a little bit interesting. It's kind of counterintuitive. Right is right, left is left in airflow direction, but up is down and down is up. So you actually, you, shine a flashlight behind this uh, honeycomb grill, you can kind of see the direction that the vents are pointing, and it's opposite of what you would think, which I think is kind of interesting. Not sure what is going on with Apple CarPlay here. I have had seamless connections all week, and of course, for the video, it's really struggling. All right, we're back in action. Another thing I really appreciate for night driving is the dimmer switch location. It's an actual dimmer switch. It works in real life. You don't have to go into a menu or swipe down like you do in Volkswagens to access it. And it makes a cool little noise when you reach max brightness. There you go. Super easy. You can see it. You don't have to hunt around for it. It's right there. There's also a quick access traction control button that turns everything off. And then you can also go in and turn on and off all of your Honda sensing systems, all your safety settings whether it's lane departure warning or blind spot monitoring or collision mitigation braking. This car has vastly improved uh, its Honda sensing systems from the previous generation. They used to be a little bit sketchy. I didn't quite trust it. I wanted to turn off collision mitigation braking in the 10th gen Civics for every drive just because sometimes it would break when I didn't want it to and that was dangerous, I felt like. This has been flawless. Otherwise, I have nice armrests, decent amount of padding here. These seats are super comfortable and they're really well bolstered too. I like the design of them. They kind of hark back to previous generation SIs. We have a nice little sunroof here. These visors slide. We've got a nice looking mirror. Rear view mirror, pretty basic there, nothing fancy. Here's our reverse camera, very typical Honda. We've got a few different views, wide, ultra wide, and from above. Electronic parking brake, I do miss actual handbrakes. They just are more convenient. You know when they're on, you know when they're off. We've got some pretty large cup holders. Um, that's a nice area, not too complicated. I felt like the 10th Gen Civic had a whole lot going on here and this just simplifies it. Nice place to put your phone. Uh, there's also another space right here. I love the way this interior is designed. It just makes sense and it's super usable and easy to live with in the real world. 
we have an analog speedometer and a fully digital gauge cluster to the left. It's kind of a screen here that can show you your tachometer, your fuel economy, a uh, bunch of different options here for your display. You can have it show you throttle and brake, a G meter, a stopwatch, or just nothing and be a tachometer. Um, I think we'll just kind of leave it on that simplify the display for this video. We have auto up down windows for our front two windows and the rear windows are, you just have to hold the button. There's a button right here to pop the trunk from the driver's side door. Nice cigarette lighter port, another USB port for passengers to charge their phones. We've got a good size glove box that fits the user manual. The Bose sound system in this car is fantastic. We'll do a little bit of a sound system test in this video. We didn't do one uh, in the night drive, so we'll include that in this. All right, let's set off and we'll take this thing for a drive. On cold starts, I'm happy to report that this shifter is really nice and smooth. There's no resistance between gears. Um, you can just shift through on a 20 degree morning without any issues. It takes a little bit of time for the transmission to warm up and it does smooth out a little bit. Happy to report that. The shifter ball itself is still freezing in colder temperatures, but that's just kind of part of the charm. It's weighted beautifully. Um, this shifter is definitely a highlight for me with this car. That and the steering are both fantastic. Clutch is super light, easy to modulate. And in this colder weather, I can definitely feel a difference in the damper stiffness compared to the nice 70, 80 degree weather we had in California. Um, shock fluid is a little bit more viscous and uh, in colder weather, it's a little bit of a stiffer ride. It's definitely busy at lower speeds. If you're used to performance cars like a Focus ST or Fiesta ST or a BRZ or maybe even a GTI or a Golf R, this SI is gonna be very similar to that. If you're wanting the ride quality from the Civic Type R in comfort mode with its adaptive dampers, this is gonna be stiffer. So something to consider. We're also on 18 inch wheels. Um, you know, you can hear it in my voice. I'm just bouncing over all these expansion joints. It's not punishing, but it's definitely an active ride. So something to consider there. There is virtually no rev hang under 3000 RPM in this car. The more I've driven it, the more it's kind of adapted to my driving style too, so it has changed. Um, but the way the revs drop between gears and the time that it takes to clutch in, shift, let the clutch out, it's perfect. It's just right. It's when you get into those higher RPMs when you're really shifting and really wanting those revs to drop at 5,500, six grand, that's when the rev hang becomes a little bit of an issue and an annoyance in my opinion. In normal mode, stop-start seems to turn on and off pretty seamlessly. The car will start back up when you clutch in, which is nice. We might be fully warmed up, so it's not going to be doing it on this drive yet. But hopefully we can get stop-start to engage at some point. Super smooth and easy to operate manual transmission. Clutch point is very nice, user-friendly. If this is your first manual car or you haven't spent a lot of time behind the, the wheel in, in manual transmissions, this is a great car to learn on and it's not going to throw you off. Again, uh, an experienced driver can drive it smoothly, a new driver can learn with it and uh, progress from there. The pedals are beautifully set for heel-toe downshifting. The engine is really responsive with its lighter flywheel for rev matching, and of course the car can also do it itself. I feel like there isn't as much wind noise in this SI uh, as I remember from the Civic hatch and sedans. Uh, just a lot of tire noise, and that can be fixed with a different tire, different compound, maybe a slightly smaller wheel. There's stop-start engaging there. In normal mode, the engine is super quiet. I 
makes a nice noise too. It has kind of a throaty growl at low revs. Appreciate the subtle blow off valve noise when you let off the throttle. the feel and feedback you get from all the inputs. The turn signal stock has this nice weight to it, a nice resistance. The engagement of the gears with this shifter is just satisfying. Everything is kind of weighted similarly and uh, really well done. I get behind the wheel of this car and I'm just satisfied by driving it. I think, um, I think this would be a nice rewarding daily driver to get into. I've looked forward to getting in this car and daily driving it all week. I know a lot of people have asked, how would I compare this to a new BRZ? And really the, the answer is, do you want rear wheel drive or do you want front wheel drive? Um, personally, when I bought my BRZ, I was ready for a rear wheel drive car. I never had one before. I was ready to kind of take that next step and learn rear wheel drive control, balance, chassis, all that stuff. I wanted to do a little bit of track work and if that is a goal of yours, I think the BRZ or GR86 is going to be a better car for you. If you want a nice daily driver, though, with a fantastic front-wheel drive chassis, this Civic Si is, the, I think, the best option on the market. The GTI used to be kind of the go-to, but honestly, I can't stand the new interior on that car. I think it is borderline dangerous. And the Civic Si is a complete opposite reaction to that. So... Um, I really, really do like the Civic S. I'm excited to see what the Type R is going to be like, but that is going to be a much more expensive proposition. And uh, this new SI is just fantastic to drive for a lot less money. I have seen some markups on these cars. I know a local dealership here in uh, Southeast Michigan is asking about like three to five thousand dollar over sticker but that's about it. Um, you can get your hands on these cars. You can get into some of these cars without a markup. They're out there. You just have to do a little bit of searching and sleuthing. Find a dealer out in the middle of nowhere, out in the country, where maybe a car like this wouldn't be as popular, and that's probably where you're going to do well. Um, and again, with time, the amount of markups and the number of dealers doing markups will, will change and, and get a little bit lower. This isn't necessarily a car that I'd want to spend more than $30,000, $32,000 on. Alright, that's a normal mode. The chassis here is absolutely amazing. There's so much traction, even on these all-season tires. You can get into the throttle before the apex with this front diff. It puts its power down so incredibly well. It's one of the best front-wheel drive handling cars I've ever driven. And that's saying a lot. Um, Honda did an amazing job with the suspension tuning on this car. For those times when it is a little bit stiff driving around town, you get it up to speed, you throw it around a few corners, and it has this wonderful compliance on turn in and throughout the throughout the, the grip circle. It really handles bumpy cornering well. Uh, the dampers take impact under load super nicely. I think uh, if you have an an environment to drive this car spiritedly. It's going to be hugely rewarding on back roads. Really fun on track. Really fun at an autocross. Um, I 
love the way this car drives uh, on a canyon road. Give you guys a little bit of a taste of rev hang here. So 4,000 RPM, full throttle. The revs actually drop pretty progressively. It's once you get up to redline that they uh, get a little bit slow to come down. But still, it's not bad. The 10th Gen Civic used to have rev hang for what seemed like days. It was ridiculous. It would just hang up there for two, three seconds. And the more I've driven this car this week, the more it's kind of adapted to my driving style, it has gotten better. We'll do another pull up here and show you guys what it looks like. One thing I do like about this car is that it kind of is a little bit of a challenge to drive smoothly and get right, but you can do it. And that makes it all that more satisfying when you do get it right. And I think more engaging, more of the time. All right, third gear, 5,000 RPM. A little bit of rev hang, but not terrible. Just love the steering on this car, the way it sets in around a corner. The weight is just perfect. That felt pretty good to me. Power level is decent. I think uh, people have already been dynoing these new SIs and they've been overperforming on the dyno. There's a little bit of wind and road noise, but again, not terrible. This week I'm really impressed with the Honda Sensing with these new driving assistance systems. Adaptive cruise control works incredibly well. On the highway, the steering assist is fantastic. It keeps you really nicely centered between the lines start accelerating pretty quickly around slower traffic it'll find the center of the lane very quickly when you merge lanes the car will prompt you about once every 10 seconds or so to put your hands back on the wheel so you do need to kind of keep a little bit of weight on the steering for it to auto steer so to speak but it's negotiating this corner beautifully look at that keeping us pretty well centered between the lines This is a much more trustworthy and reliable system in this 11th gen Civic, and uh, I think it makes this a fantastic daily driver. It's one of the few manual cars that has adaptive cruise control, that has lane keep assist, that works this well. With the BRZ, the GR86, you have to go for the automatic car to get these features, and uh, don't even bother with the automatic BRZs. The tuning is terrible. I have excellent visibility all around me. The only place that's lacking a little bit is my rear view mirror. There's just a little bit of a hump where that third brake light goes. Sometimes it blocks vehicles, but for the most part, it's not too bad. You can usually see what's directly behind you. If anything, at night, it kind of reduces headlight glare a little bit. Seventy-eight miles an hour, wind, road, tire noise. Actually, feels pretty good. This would be a fantastic road trip car. The seats are super comfortable. You'll average close to forty miles to the gallon in this thing. The fuel economy is hugely impressive in this new SI. This one-point-five liter engine is so so efficient, and you can fill it with regular gas. Honestly, I have preferred driving this in sport mode all week, even over individual and over normal. I like the steering weight in sport mode. 
Honda really got the feel and the dynamics right with this car. The brakes feel awesome. You really have a pretty good idea of what this chassis is doing at the limit too. The closer you get to scrubbing those front tires, the more steering feel comes through the rim. I think if you really, really wanted to get a tune and have it tuned out, you could, because we have a lightweight flywheel in this car now. The rev matching system is really nice too. It's a lot more consistent than the previous generation car was, even the Type R. It's a little bit lazy to rev match sometimes, but you can always give it a little bit of encouragement with your right foot, speed things up a little bit. <laughs> also, if you let off the throttle before you clutch in, that will reduce rev hanging a little bit too. Personally, I would have no problem dailying one of these cars. I think it's going to be an enjoyable vehicle to own. It's super recommendable compared to the last generation SI. I hate to say it, but I was never a fan of the 10th Gen Civic in general. Um, if I were to get one, I would have gotten just a, a CVT Touring. <laughs> I didn't like the manual transmission in the short in the Sport. And uh, I just wasn't a fan of the way the SI drove. I felt like it was cheap and flimsy and I don't know. It, it just never did it for me. There were so many other better options at that time. But that's no longer the case. This 11th Gen Civic, I think, is one of the best performance enthusiast-oriented buys on the market right now. If you can get one for around 30000 bucks, it's a screaming deal. I think it's going to be a nice, enjoyable, fun car to own. If you want front-wheel drive, get the Civic Si. If you want rear-wheel drive, get a BRZ or GR86. That's the answer to that question. Um, the Civic Si, of course, is way more practical, way more usable, way more daily driver-friendly than a BRZ, but that's not to say that the BRZ isn't a practical sports car option. Really, I think the takeaway for me with this car this week has been the more I've driven this, the more I've enjoyed it and the more it's grown on me. And that's a really hard thing to predict as a car reviewer is until you really spend time with a car, you can start driving something, have really good first impressions on it, really like it initially, and then maybe it doesn't quite live up to your expectations on a daily basis. I will say this Civic Si has stayed in line with my expectations. It's still a fun car to drive after a few days behind the wheel. Yes, it's not perfect, but uh, it has grown on me, and that is a really rare thing in today's automotive landscape. Um, I really enjoyed this car. I would definitely recommend this for anyone who's looking for a nice, fun, solid, enjoyable, safe daily driver. So I think that's going to kind of sum up my thoughts on what it's like to daily drive the Civic Si. If you guys have any more questions, chime in on the comments. Um, it would be nice to get one of these out on track at some point, too. Or maybe out to an autocross in the summer. All right. Let's go into our sound system test playlist. And we will listen to some music. I think this Bose sound system is class leading in this segment. It's a fantastic sound system. It's really clear, really high quality. 
So glad that Honda's putting branded sound systems back into their cars. It makes a big difference. Okay guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.